Mr. Worldwide. I've been thinking about this for a while, and this is um, near and close to my heart. That's why we're here in Africa. How do we uh, unite together in terms of the global African diaspora and continental Africans, young people that are switched on like yourself here on the continent? How do we unite them like black Americans, black British, black Caribbean, uh, with brothers like yourself that are open-minded to unite? Uh, it starts with I mean, some individuals at least taking up responsibility to kind of do something. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I remember I was getting like a lot of calls from individuals that would want to have a discussion with me. And then there was this day I picked a call from a young individual in Geneva. And they already have like an existing association. But these are just young Africans in Geneva, having little idea about what is in Africa, but they've been watching on my videos. Right? And then I was like, okay, this is good. But every two weeks, I can appear in your meetings to make sure that we have a topic that we discuss about the country. Virtually. Virtually. Okay. So we started this, and it is usually on Zoom calls, and then we keep doing it. And now most of them who were even not maybe very, very committed to the association, now they are so eager to come down to the continent and see what is actually going on. And another thing is, we have few individuals, for instance, that normally come to the continent. And it is always good when we are traveling as parents, we try to you know, instill that same value in our kids. Mm. Like, don't just come to Africa and have fun, go with your children. Um, make sure that they have a link with young people and this I've even told the uh, code that's the Council of African Descent in the Gambia Say that again? Code that's the Council of African Descendants in the Gambia that I intend to do something you have many individuals coming to the Gambia they sometimes come with their children they have an office space and upstairs no one is using it every week let them come I can get youth from the Gambia and myself to come and have a lecture kind of with them. Talk to them on social inclusion, talk to them on culture, talk to them on values, and also try to encourage you know, love and integration among ourselves as young people. So that even if they're just there for the ho for a holiday, for instance, yeah. they're going to have the desire to come back. Right. Because there's at least a new connection and a new integration that they cannot have where they're living in, in America or in Europe. So such things is something that we can promote. But another thing is, now we have associations or organizations in the West that are also led by you know, uh, African individuals or African descendants. We have to rethink about integration. Mm -hmm. It's not just about gathering money from somewhere and come and do a project in a community. Sometimes the community does not even appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But wow. for the sustainability of that, it means um, the way that we can come together, mobilize ourselves and mobilize funds, yeah. let us recruit youths and put them in touch with youths here. It can be through a mentorship program where people with skills, with, with, skills, with knowledge, teachers, can mentor young people in the continent. Mm -hmm. But not only mentoring them virtually, but can have a trip in yes. which when they come, they interact with them, you know, instill some of this knowledge, some of this um, things that they have been doing, uh, the challenges that they face in the West, and also to tell them the beauty about the continent as to how they need to remain here and work for the better good of the continent. Because we have an existing image about the West that is really affecting the African youth that is growing up. Because we get the news from BBC, from all these channels, and they show us the good part that that is the land of opportunities mm -hmm. and the American dream exactly and, and, and you cannot get things done here mm -hmm. unless you have that mentality or unless you try to go in there mm -hmm. and in most cases we have seen our own brothers and sisters and I'm sorry to say but including Gambians for instance mm -hmm. 
today in camps in Spain, some drowned in the Mediterranean Sea, some are suffering, and they were just going, thinking that yes, what they were showing on media and everything is up there. And what they found was the direct opposite of it. Yeah. Some of them gathered money that they could have used to start some business here and use it on the journey and still it has no benefit, there is no return. So I want to believe that if we really want to do something, because my objective is not the old generation. I mean, we have few that we can learn from, but to liberate the continent, we need a reprogram in the minds of the African youth. Reprogram. Because they're going through a lot there in the diaspora. And we are also going through a lot here in Africa. In Africa, because we have a system imposed on us. And that same system rejects our own identity and values. But the reality is, that is where we school, that is where we learn, and it is not working. So, we can do something by collaborating and also to bring networks of organizations, um, entities that are working towards African integration. Because the biggest problem is not just the resources going, it is the disconnection itself. I mean, I don't believe in Caribbean African and American African or British African or African African. I don't believe in that. What I believe is African. And that is what we need to promote. But as long as when we face each other, we first try to distinguish who is who, who is who, and not seeing the bigger picture which is being African, it still makes it difficult. So I believe that this is a message that needs to be in the minds and hearts of every young Africans because this was exactly the same thing that the likes of Gabi, B. Dubois, Henry Clark, they were all saying the same message. But we have torn, you know, a deaf ear on that message for far too long. Yeah. And in order for us to move forward, I really believe that we have to encourage people coming into the continent to understand that we equally have challenges here in Africa. Um, it is not that we have everything in its perfect form, but the problem can only be solved by us here. The practical problems require practical solutions, and we don't solve it by running away. The African problem or the solutions cannot be imported. I've seen, said this over and over. It's not something that we can import from somewhere. We can import the food and everything. Yes, fine. But the real problem, a solution that will change the status quo in Africa cannot be imported. I want you to say that again, whereas, like you said, uh, some young Africans are swimming across these dangerous waters and taking these dangerous trips to escape whatever they think is a greener pasture on the other side. Yeah. But your problems are gonna follow you, right? Exactly. We have to work them out in Africa. Exactly. And the funny thing is, these people going, they're not going because they don't have skills. Mm. Most of them, they have skills. They're going because they think the skills that they have is going to pay them more there. Mm. But what we really see is, imagine an African graduate will go somewhere in Europe and ended up cleaning mess. We see this all the time, yeah. And we even have like our own sisters nowadays who will be taken into the Arabian countries, for instance, mm. and what they ended up doing is what? Being enslaved. Made or... Made, doing work, and, and they're not paid for. And they're abused. And, they're abused. Well. Yes. and this is happening to individuals whom the continent actually needs for its survival. These are young doctors, these are young lawyers, mm. young teachers, mm. people with skills. That really needs to drive the African development. Brain drain. So like them leaving causes a brain exactly, drain on the continent. Exactly, because it's one thing to have a skill set. It's another thing to have a mindset. Mm. So the skills must be accompanied with a mind that definitely can instill certain uh, development, culture, values in us. Yeah. But the reality on the ground today is you get skills, you think they don't pay off. Just recently, I mean, we saw of a youth who work and invent a drone in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Very underprivileged. He just used some things, you know, wood stuff, built a drone and was able to fly it. What happened the next weeks? 
a company in Finland that is specializing mm. on drone, uh, manuf- that manufactured drone, gave him direct employment and, and him fly him from Nigeria to Finland. That is someone that the entire Nigeria needs for its survival in the future. Right. But today he is somewhere and perhaps in the long run he might never do anything that is going to contribute genuinely to Nigeria's development. And that, that is just one yes, that one we example. have on record. Yeah. And and I want I want to bring you back to the program because uh, yeah we do know that and we know that there's more Nigerian doctors in LA or New York than there are in Lagos now. We know there's more Ghanaian doctors and so and so moving it, and these kind of things. We know these stories. I want to bring you back to the program that you want to start uh, in the Gambia and other countries in Africa. Uh, how do you feel about HBCUs, historically black colleges and our universities? The young people there actually physically coming to the continent and having these kinds of tangible exchanges yeah. with Africans here. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you this. Um, the Chinese, for instance, in 2000, 2001, 2002, they championed the formation of what is called the China Africa Think Tank Forum. The objective of which was to bring Chinese scholars and African scholars in joint research within the continent. And this information is what the Chinese were able to use to build on themselves as to what is needed to take for the Africans. And this helped their markets, it helped their businesses. What did they do for Africa? <laughs> because they can make all the products that we need in Africa and the next minute it's on our ports. Uh-huh. Instead of us concentrating on manufacturing them, now we just have to go and buy them. Which keeps us in So play. we've destroyed our indigenous industries and they just keep supplying and we are the, I mean, the loyal buyers. Now, a similar approach Having individuals with skills, with knowledge about African history, African civilization in America, in Europe, we actually need these brothers and sisters because people need to be informed about the reality of what is happening in the other side of the world. The fact that we are running to go through the Mediterranean Sea is happening because we don't get to see the real image. So having these people on board is going to empower the young people in school, but it's also going to help the young people in school to get to know another reality. But not only that, the interaction is a kind of an integration that the continent needs for the future collaboration of her diaspora. Hmm. Once this is built, we can have a shift in the education system because some of them specialize on curriculum development and things like that, early childhood education, reprogramming and stuff like this, we need them in our schools. Yes. So having such programs is going to enhance a new collaboration between Af- uh, Af- African youths, but at the same time, give us an opportunity to rethink about our own education system mm-hmm. on how we can tailor it in a way that it's going to help us now and for the future but also in dealing with the rest of the world. So I want to mention to you, um, I brought up the HBCUs for a specific reason. Um, first off, Kwame Nkrumah went yeah. to Lincoln University. Yeah. Uh, the first president of uh, Nigeria yeah. went to an HBCU. So this Pan-African mentality has been happening for decades. However, it took until 2020 for the first um, HBCU to actually put boots on the ground in Africa. Um, uh, Morgan State in Baltimore, and they partnered with a uh, university in Ghana. Yeah. Um, and then there's another one now this year, it's going to open next year, but they signed yeah. the deal this year to partner with, again, another university, a new one yeah. in Ghana. So these are going to be giving out degree programs that the credits would be on equal footing, yeah. right? If you take them in, in Ghana or if you took them in America. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the step beyond that is that uh, those HBCUs are going to send teachers as well so um, uh, lecturers to Ghana as well to have that um, best practices and um, uh, intellectual exchange so do you think that it should be a requirement even for you know um, black students to 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 come to the continent that being offered instead of like you know like when we think about foreign exchange for instance Mm -hmm. I hate that word but like when I'm like when I'm thinking about Africa but like when we think about an exchange student they're going to Europe. Yeah. That's what we think about in America, yeah. that this exchange student goes to Europe and learns European culture. 
So shouldn't that kind of be like a coming home kind of thing for African black students yeah. coming to the continent to learn? Yeah, I mean, um, you see, some of these things, like whether we adapt it or not, some individuals out there are doing it. I went to a public university in Gambia, and we were constantly receiving students coming from all part of the world. And I'm sorry to say, but these were not our own people. They will come, spend three weeks or so with us, inter uh, kind of integrate, learn what are we doing in school. So they're European stuff like and that. Asian students. European, Russians, different part of the world. They were all coming in. And what they do is after three weeks, after one month, they go back with a lot of information. But this is what we have not been doing as a people. And as I said earlier on, like there was a deep programming on disconnecting the African. And this still exists. Yeah. So most of us will prefer, yes, we want to go to Europe for a fellowship, we want to go to Europe for an exchange program, but not wanting to go in a fellow African country. Mm -hmm. Like this is not just from the diaspora, for instance. If you go to the Gambia, people will prefer to go to Europe for an exchange program than to come to Rwanda, for instance. Right. So there is already an existing disconnection, with, uh, disconnection within the continent, the continent and yeah. it also affects us when it comes to dealing with our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Right. So that is why I believe that the school system needs to take a step in making sure that we can build more correlation or relationship between universities here and universities maybe in some part of the world that are championed by black communities. Yeah. And then to allow or make it easy for children to come down to the ground and see for themselves. I know a lot of them learn about history in Africa, you know, the culture, the civilization. It would be important for them to come down and see for themselves. Mm. That yes, this existed before. You're reading about Egypt, you're reading about the Mali Empire, you're reading about the Ghana Empire. You're reading about Shanghai, you're reading about different things and civilization. I'll tell you, this is very recent for America. Um, and part of it is even like the allure of wealth. Exactly. So, for instance, when we hear that the richest person in history was a black person, Mansa Musa, yeah. all of a sudden we're interested. Exactly. Yeah. Prior to that, if we just hear like, oh, Africa's poor, uh, okay, well, I guess I'm American. Yeah, and, and, and you're, you're right. I mean, the story of Mansa Musa have been kept away from the real Africans. and not just of the wealth, but the institutions in terms of education, trade and etc. that they were able to champion in the Mali Empire. As we speak, there are thousands of manuscripts in Timbuktu that are yet to be interpreted in a language that we understand now for it. These are things that we expect Africans to come and do. We don't expect anyone outside of the world to do it for us. The same thing happens in Egypt, for instance. I mean, there were libraries, people came in, get all the information and brought it down and deny us access. Timbuktu was set on fire a yeah. few years ago. We tried to recover, some of the things were recovered. I, for instance, have a friend who was able to write 20,000 manuscripts from Timbuktu and interpret it in, in the Arabic language, some in French, and he's trying to do the same thing for English, for instance. So, I think a lot have been done to our history, our civilization. But what I believe is, it's just something hijacked. We don't lose it. And we can go for it. It just needs efforts. And those efforts start with collaborating. If people are learning about the history somewhere else, let us come down and have a practice. Let us have African youths integrating among themselves. Trying to make sure that the disconnection that existed among, you know, or for 400 years ago is rich. To some extent, we can tailor a new African perspective that holds to our own values, our own realities, our own history, but at the same time, save a trajectory for the future. The youths in the continent have skills, but the issue is the mindset. You can have all the skills that you want, but you think it cannot be productive in the continent. But yet we have, for instance, I fly a lot within Africa. And on every flight, it's usually dominated by Chinese. I'm like, what is happening? Where is the rest of the continent going to? Yeah. We say, no, we don't see things here. But yet every flight that you go, there is, I mean, majority is Chinese. So we have to understand that there is values within us 
that people are stealing on a daily basis. And we must see that within us to make sure that we can appreciate it. We were, we were talking earlier about the year of return and um, our good sister mentioned um, about that invitation, that reaching out by the president of Ghana yeah. to uh, African diaspora to say, come back home, you're welcome here. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that's something that uh, you would be interested to do to go to um, the States, to go to the Caribbean, to go to Europe and speak with uh, African diaspora to say that, you know, this is a new day. Like, this exactly. is new Africa. You know, you are the, not just the future. I like to tell like young people, like, you're not the future. You're the now. Exactly. We keep on telling young people they're the future, they're going to wait. Yeah. You're the now. So do you feel like you need to go to these places as well and personally invite yeah. people to learn from your program in the Ghana that you want to start developing, uh, excuse me, in the Gambia that you want to start developing? Yeah, I mean, that is, I have to uh, acknowledge and appreciate the president of Ghana for taking that bold step. But at the same time, it has to be continental. Mm -hmm. Like, we've seen what happened in Ghana. It was like they were able to raise 1.9 billion US dollars just within right. nine months. Exactly. And that was like your own people coming back, trying to invest, trying to do something within the country. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's not just the investment side. The investment is one thing. Education is another thing. Yeah. You have other areas that you need to you know, explore to make that to make it possible for you to solidify this relationship. Some people have visited Ghana and now they are back, maybe they cannot come back again and stuff like that. But it must be solidified in a way that people will intend to come and leave, not just to come as tourists. Mm -hmm. They will intend yes. to come and invest in the continent to help in changing lives, but at the same time to help in you know, solving problems or bringing solutions to the continent. Another thing is that one of the most um, used point line, as you said, is telling the youths that you need to wait for be uh, for when the future. You, up, yeah. you know, <laughs> wait in ten years, wait in fifty years, mm. and that is nothing but to keep them calm because you believe that they are frustrated in one way or the other. And what you are telling them is, it will be your chance to eat, so just be patient. But that is not the reality. And my objective would be the same thing. If I have the chance to go to the Caribbean, to go and meet other individuals from the diaspora, to be like, you know, something is going on in Africa. Let us collaborate to build something. I'm more than willing to do that. I believe that I cannot be the solution as an individual alone. You need thousands of people saying the same message. You need millions of Africans you know, adhering to the fact that something needs to be done in order for us to save our people. Because this is exactly what Marcus Garvey said. He travels and what he realized was Africans were always in the lowest class yes. in anywhere that Everywhere he visits. He went, yes. So he was like, something needs to be done for self-upliftment and self-reliance. First, we must be able to empower ourselves financially but we must also educate ourselves on our existing reality of who we are. Yeah. And this thing needs to be the instrument of our new collaboration. The issue that we need in order to build unity within the continent and even outside of the continent, but to better collaborate as young people. Mm -hmm. A lot is happening in the continent and it's just because of the mindset, for instance. As we are here sitting now chatting as you know, Africans, there is another group of Africans who may be carrying guns and hunting fellow Africans, for yeah. instance. Wow. And they're doing so not because of anything, but the mindset. As we always say at this time, live global and prosper. Check us out on YouTube, Global Brothers Podcast, and please subscribe and share and, you know, continue to support, you know, good yeah. content. Mr. Worldwide.